the slider moves back and forth in your recip saw to drive the blade. It is driven by the wobble plate, supported by the plane bearings, and accepts the blade clamp, which holds the blade. The slider can wear over time, both where the bearings rub against it and where the wobble plate attaches. Occasionally, it can break on the end, where the blade clamp attaches. Replacing the slider is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Socha. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the shoe from the saw. Now I'll remove the cap and the shift button. And inside the front of the saw, I'll remove the leaf spring. Now I can remove the boot. The removal can be a little bit challenging because it fits very tightly around the saw. I found the best way to do it is to roll it over itself as I work to the top of the saw. Now I need to pull the boot back through itself so we can reinstall it later. Now I can remove the gearbox cover. Next I'll remove the blade clamp. First, I'll remove the rubber cover. The clamp is held together with a split retaining ring. I'll use a pick to remove it. Now I'll remove the driving sleeve. the shoulder pin and spring, the plastic ring, and now the clamp collar. The collar is held in place with a metal pin. I'll use a magnet to remove it. The next series of blade clamp components are held in place with a pin. I'll use a punch to remove it. These components are under tension from two different springs. As I remove the pin, I'll be careful that I don't lose any of the parts. Now I'll pull the punch away from the shaft and that will release the springs. Now I can remove the slider assembly from the housing. It's held in place with two pins. The pins are secured with retaining rings. I'll go ahead and remove those. Now I can remove the pins. The first one is the oscillation adjustment lever. The second pin, I'll use a hammer and punch to remove. And now I can remove the slider assembly from the housing. Now remove the plane bearing retainers. With the retainers removed, I can pull the slider from the housing. Now I'll replace the slider. I'll transfer the bearings from the old slider to the new. 
Now I'll reassemble the slider assembly. As I install the plane bearings into the housing, I want to make sure that the tab on each one of them fits down into the groove on the housing. I'll slide the shaft through the seal plate, align the bearings, Reinstall the front seal. Next, I'll install the shoulder sleeve and now secure everything with the bearing retainers. Now I can reinstall the slider assembly back into the gear housing. On the back side of the slider assembly, there are two springs that fit into these holes on the housing. Now the slider assembly is ready to go back into the housing. I'll secure it with the pins. Slide the pin into the housing and tap it into place. And I'll secure the pin with the retaining ring. Now the second pin. And again, I'll re secure it with the retaining ring. Now I'll reassemble the blade clamp. It can seem a little intimidating because there are 13 parts but with a couple of tricks, it actually goes pretty easy. First, I'll install the torsion spring. As I do this, this center leg should be pointed up, so the gap is at the top. Also, this bent leg on the side should be on the right side of the saw when you're standing at the rear. I slide this into the groove on the shaft. Next, I'll install the sleeve. There's a hole on the back of the sleeve, and the torsion spring needs to go into that hole. Now install the longer compression spring. It goes into the groove in the center of the shaft. Now I need to align the sleeve with the opening for the pin in the side of the shaft. I'll need to rotate the sleeve around to expose that opening. As I rotate the sleeve, it's important that I turn it clockwise. I'll insert the pin into the hole, but I don't want it to go all the way through. At this point, I'm just holding the sleeve in that position. Next, I'll install the push plate. I slide it into the shaft with the tab pointing forward. Now I'll use a punch to push the push plate down until the hole in the push plate is aligned with the pin. Once the hole is aligned, I'll push the pin through the entire assembly. Like that. Now I'll temporarily place the driving sleeve onto the assembly that we've just installed and again rotate it clockwise until the clamp locks in the open position. Then I'll remove the sleeve. Now I'll reinstall the driving sleeve guide. You'll notice there's two notches in it. I align those notches with the grooves on the sleeve. Now I'll reinstall the guide sleeve. I place it over the shaft and secure it with the small pin. On the opposite side, I'll reinstall the shoulder pin with the compression sleeve over it. Now I'll align the tabs on the driving sleeve with the grooves on the plastic sleeves and install this piece. And now re-secure everything with a split retaining ring. Now reinstall the rubber cover. Now I can reinstall the gear cover. As I do, I need to make sure I align the slider with the needle bearing. The needle bearing should fit in between the grooves on the slider. And I'll secure the cover with the screws.
Now I can reinstall the boot. I'm going to apply a little bit of silicone spray to a rag and then rub it onto the saw housing. That'll make it easier to install the boot. I'll slide the boot over the housing and work it into place. The first step in reinstalling the shaft button assembly is to reinstall the leaf spring. The spring fits into the housing with the tabs facing towards the top of the saw. I have the saw upside down right now. The tabs fit in between a couple of metal grooves inside the housing that you won't be able to see as I install it. I'll place the leaf spring into the opening, aligning those tabs, and now that it's in place, I can install the shaft button. I'll be careful not, not to knock the leaf spring out of the way as I install the shaft button. With the shaft button in place, now I can install the cap. I'll place a socket beneath the shaft button and that'll hold it in place as I install the cap. I'll place the cap over the shaft and tap it into place with a rubber mallet. And reinstall the shoe. And now you can replace the slider in your recip saw. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.